Dear viewers, I have picked up a topic today as requested by you. Many of the NRIs have lots of fixed deposits as NREFDs. When they come back to India, suddenly they realize that these NREFDs will be converted into resident FDs and they are sitting on a potentially a very high tax bracket and they have to shell down a lot of money as taxes. You have asked me whether it is possible to split this income between husband and wife and reduce the income tax burden on you all. We are going to discuss all these issues. Is it possible for you to reduce tax bracket by splitting your income in the names of more than one person? This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Kanbat, investment consultant and a financial planner. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. To talk about the taxation issues as well as what you can do to bring down your taxes or what action you take, how it will impact your taxes, I have requested my eminent faculty, Chartered Accountant Sriram Rao to be there with me in our studios today. Mr. Sriram Rao is a practicing Chartered Accountant, an expert on direct taxes, a partner at Nitin J. Shetty & Co. He has been serving the HNI community across the globe, helping them to solve their taxation issues. Welcome to this show, Chartered Accountant Sriram Rao. Thank you. Mr. Sriram Rao, we have picked up a topic today based on the request made by several of our viewers. So they are asking us this question. When I am an NRI, I have a lot of NREFDs which we have built. These NREFDs are tax free. Uh, when I am an NRA, but when I come back, I have to redesignate that to a resident FD. Correct. They are asking me the specific question: What if I split this FDs in my name and my wife's name, or my name and my children's name? Will it help me to uh, reduce my tax bracket? What do you have to uh, say to the viewers? As far as uh, this question is concerned, let me sum it up. Let me not uh, make it specific to fixed deposits as such. Okay. Now, from the point of view of uh, gifting of any asset, including fixed deposit, movable property, movable property, whatever it may be, gifting the same to the wife or transferring it, the title of that property to the name of the wife, is not prohibited under Income Tax Act. It is permitted. Yes, it is permitted okay. as well as there is no tax liability on that. Okay. However, once such a transfer takes place, then any income is derived by the spouse. Mm. Such income will have to be clubbed in the hands of the transferer. So, let me summarize my understanding here. If I have an FD, I will mm. transfer it to my wife's name. Okay. Or if I have a building, mm. I will transfer it to my wife's name. Okay. Now the building is generating a rent for me hmm. and uh, the FDs are generating uh, interest on that, Correct. which is an income. Correct. Now you are saying that if I do that, the transfer is perfect, it is legally allowed. Yes. But the income which is coming by way of interest or rent or anything else Correct. will be taxed in my hand. Yes. It will not be split in the name of me and my wife. No, it will not be split. Uh, the income cannot be taxed in the hands of the receiver okay it will be taxed in the hands of the uh, actual owner okay of that particular property may so not be the legal owner yeah because this transfer takes place without any consideration passing on between one and another the intention is to reduce the tax burden. yes yes okay this concept is called as clubbing of income under income tax act okay so if somebody does this then uh, the income will be clubbed in the hands of uh, these two individuals which is the transferer has to pay uh, taxes as if that it is his own income. Yes. You can transfer the asset, but it will not materially uh, bring down taxation uh, anywhere uh, in this particular. Yes. Case. So that issue is ruled out. Yes. What if the income is shared between children? Here, uh, two possibilities will come. One is uh, my children are minor, or one is my children are major. Hmm. What happens in that case? See, if it is to a children who are minor. Let me uh, complete that first. 
if it is transferred to a children who are minor then the income what earned by that minor children in the name of that minor children will have to be clubbed in the hands of any one of the parent hmm. whose income is more okay for a financial year okay so say for example husband and wife their taxable income in india is 6 lakh for husband and uh, 2 lakhs for wife hmm. then minor child earns say for example 1 lakh of fd interest hmm. so at this point in time this 1 lakh will have to be clubbed compulsorily in the hands of the uh, income of the husband whose income is more his so taxable income of husband that is 6 lakh plus 1 lakh of minor child so totally 7 lakh will be a taxable income so even when it is getting clubbed it should be clubbed with the parent whose income is higher yes it can't be clubbed with the other other parent no right so this is as far as minor children are concerned right. see we discussed this topic but at the ground level there are a lot of uh, variations to it say for example uh, nra both husband and wife are working wife is working in one company or mm. she may be working as a teacher or doing some job and husband is having a thing in such a case how the law treats uh, the income that is derived uh, in that case uh, still whether the income from uh, the wife's assets are taxed at the husband's level or how it is treated there see here we have to see individuality now say for example husband is working he accumulated income out of his working whatever it may be okay and again he has invested and he is earning income in his name so everything will be taxed in his na- his hand okay at the same time wife is also working she is earning income that income has to be clubbed in the hands of wife only hmm. Hmm. at the same time out of the income what she has earned she hmm. saved hmm. again that got invested somewhere okay. income earned from that okay. that also has to be uh, taxed in the hands of wife okay okay there is no clubbing of income because here hus- either the husband or the wife they are putting in an effort they are actively participating in generating the original income okay and out of the savings out of the original income that again further investment that has been done okay so that is not getting clubbed okay so that it will be taxed individually okay so my understanding is that suppose if husband and wife have independent streams of income which is coming because of their respective working hmm. and these assets have been built over certain number of years hmm. then this clubbing provision will not attract yes so the clubbing provisions will come into effect when you uh, intentionally transfer certain assets correct with the ex- in, uh, with an intention to bring down your tax bracket yes then the clubbing provisions will uh, come into effect yes so if somebody wants to really want to uh, say that want to really give it to your spouse or you know do a tax planning uh, probably how to plan it in such a way that it becomes the genuine income of your uh, wife and it should not be done at one single point of time uh, and unnecessarily attracting the Correct. clubbing provisions correct here again that um, earlier instance i mean first question what you had asked whether transfer takes place and clubbing of the uh, income out of that transfer of the asset in the hands of the husband hmm. or the spouse who has transfer fund so now here we can also think from another angle say for example one person transfers to his spouse and the spouse invests in some business hmm. or say spouse has invested um, uh, in uh, some um, um, say she sp- sets up some, she sets some up, uh, yes business yes, or actively actively she participates some uh, activity uh, or to generate the income out of that uh, funds which has been gifted okay so at that time there is a active participation from her she might have the proper qualification as it is required to okay. earn that income out of the gifted funds okay so at that time that income will be taxed in her individual hands only that so will not be again clubbed in the hands right. of the so, so there is a discretion here the yes. discretion is that if there is a genuine intention here that the husband has transferred assets to wife with an intention to help her set up a business or do something or kind of a thing correct and if wife has got the requisite qualification and if she can demonstrate that that income is coming because of her active participation correct such income will not be uh, clubbed in the hands of the uh, the transfer uh, the right. transfer correct right uh, there is one more uh, question that comes to my mind is so it's a routine practice that uh, the 
uh, husbands give certain amount of money to wife for maintenance of the house. Hmm. So you have day to day expenses and hmm. kind of thing. They give a lump sum every month. And wife being very careful and try to save some money out of it and she builds a uh, corpus over a period of time. Hmm. Uh, what happens to income that comes from uh, such savings? Uh, will it have to be clubbed in the hands of the husband? Now, now again here we have to see what is the quantum of fun money which has been transferred to the wife mm -hmm. and out of such fund which has been transferred to the wife, what is the portion she has invested? Okay. Okay. And what is the portion she has spent on a monthly basis? Okay. So now, it may be a routine practice in uh, many of their houses. I mean, when the uh, sp uh, spouse is a housewife or you know who, whatever it may be, they will transfer some fund on a monthly basis. Then over a period of time, they have accumulated. Ah. And if they are able to demonstrate that over a period of time, the funds have been accumulated, the investment out of that and the income out generated out of that will not be clubbed in the hands of the husband or the spouse okay. who has transferred the funds. Okay. It has to be taxed in the hands of that particular individual. So the onus of proving that it is a genuine transaction with the amount has been built over a certain number of years and Correct. it can be argued that okay this is something genuine then uh, the clubbing provisions may not come in. Yes. One more thing that comes to my mind is uh, it's quite routine. See uh, the lady of the house gets uh, gifts during the anniversary, hmm. during birthday. Hmm. Uh, she gets gifts from children. Hmm. She will get the uh, gift from the spouse, hmm. and she gets gifts from in-laws, hmm. parents. Hmm. So, which is routine. Correct. And many of these gifts are in uh, instead of being in jewelry or something else, can also come in the form of cash. Yes. Over longer periods of time, this can be quite substantial amount of money. Yes. And if the lady has not spent the money and built an FD or some other asset, what happens to the income uh, that she gets from such assets? See, normally under clubbing of provisions, there is no specific uh, bifurcation between a gift given um, on the occasion of some, uh, you know, say birthday or anniversary oh. or anything. The gift given is gift. Okay. Whatever may be the situation. So, in those kind of circumstances, it, it also depends on what is the quantum of gift is given and okay. compared to the income of that particular person. Okay. If it is a small amount of gift and all, then there should not be an issue of mm. clubbing of income out of it. But if it is a substantial fund, okay. say for example, the parents, um, maybe they find that, you know, um, I want to settle the issue. Hmm. Okay, and during her birthday, on one fine day, they will give her uh, some uh, X amount hmm. uh, and they will tell that, you know, this is what my lifetime savings, hmm. I am giving it to you. Hmm. Uh, and it is like w quite a substantial fund hmm. which is been given by the parents to the uh, person, hmm. okay, uh, compared to the income which has been earned by that parent and accumulated by them over a period of time. Hmm. So, there cannot be any specific amount as such. But the parent might have accumulated a crore of rupees okay. during their lifetime. They are giving about 70, 80 lakhs out of it to the one particular children. So that that actually is not uh, a proper uh, this one. It can be again considered from the point of view of um, uh, you know tax planning uh, measure. It can be considered like that. Okay. However, it is a genuine. Say out of that one lakh they are given hmm. out of one crore accumulation. So, it is a very small amount compared to that. Okay. So, there is no actually, you know, trying to splitting of income as such. By just, you know, love and affection, they have given the gift. Okay. So, these are the, there are no specific answers around that. It yes. should be seen in a situational uh, context. Yes. Uh, whether it is done with an intention to bring down my taxes or is it uh, uh, just because of an arrangement, I am getting older, at some point of time I have to transfer my assets to my next of kith and kin. I am trying to do it during my lifetime. So, if you are able to convince the taxman, uh, then uh, he yes. may take a uh, appropriate view on that. Correct. So, there is no specific uh, Correct. Uh, thing like that. Uh, Mr. Ram, one more question that comes to my mind is, we spoke about the assets being transferred to a spouse or uh, to children, minor, major. Uh, whatever it is. Now, in many of the wealthy families, there are uh, issues pertaining to trust. They give, uh, uh, they form a trust, they transfer assets to the trust and they will uh, uh, mention how the income from that particular assets are, have to be disposed of. 
uh, are there any clubbing provisions in uh, such cases where uh, transferor transfers it to trust? Uh, what guidelines are there? Now, in case of a trust, there are couple of conditions which needs to be taken into consideration. Now, the transferor, when he transfers one asset to a trust and the, the income generated out of that particular asset by the trust will have to be given to the beneficiary. Yeah. Okay. So, if such a trust is not revocable during the lifetime of the beneficiary. Hmm. The trust is not revocable. Yes. Okay. So, mean, meaning thereby now we are, we are talking about the trust only. Okay. Now, the trust is not revocable during the lifetime of the beneficiary okay. of that particular trust. Okay. As well as the trust is not formed for the immediate or deferred benefit of the transferor himself or okay. transferor and his spouse. So, two conditions yes. here. The trust, the trust should be irrevocable. Correct. And it should not have been formed with the exclusive intention of getting a benefit out of the trust on an immediate basis or on a deferred basis to the person who is transferring the asset. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, if these two conditions are specified, then there is no clubbing of uh, income provisions which is applicable. Okay. However, any of the conditions are not met, then the clubbing provisions will apply. Okay. And this position is um, same or uh, similar position is uh, also there in the uh, case of uh, transfer of an asset to a particular person rather than to a trust. Okay. So, if an asset is transferred to a particular person and such asset is not revocable during the lifetime of that part particular person hmm. as well as the immediate or deferred benefit is not received by the transferor himself. Okay. So, then there will not be any clubbing of provisions. So, but uh, spouse is not taken into account in this particular yes. case. It is yes. other than the spouse. Yes. It is other than the spouse Correct. what we are referring here. Correct. So, you have transferred an asset. Hmm. and it is an irrevocable transfer Correct. during the beneficiary's lifetime. Correct. Then any income that comes from that will not be taxed in the hands of the uh, uh, in the hands of the transfer. Correct. Right. See, uh, that gives uh, me one more question that is there in my mind is, see in many of the families there are unfortunate events. See, for example, there is a sibling uh, who is uh, differently able or uh, you know, can't yeah. Yeah. sustain themselves. Hmm. So, out of love and affection, hmm. one of the siblings may establish a trust hmm. uh, and transfer some assets hmm. and says the income from that should be used for uh, lifetime maintenance of this uh, particular sibling. Yeah. Well, the, the particular sibling. Hmm. And after some time, after many number of years, if that sibling passes away, hmm. the beneficiary sibling, hmm. Uh, then what happens to the income during the lifetime of the beneficiary? So, it is an irrevocable trust which has been formed and as long as that beneficiary is alive, the income is going to the beneficiary. Now, when the transfer is still alive, but this beneficiary passes away. So, at the time, what happens? At the time, normally, when there is no beneficiary, the again the asset will come back to the transferor. Okay. I mean, these conditions normally would, would have been mentioned in the trust, trust deed. deed. Yes. Okay. So, at that time, after the expiry of that particular sibling, the income whatever earned by that particular asset will have to be again taxed in the hands of the transfer because the asset again has come it back. It has in. come back. Yes. So, the, here the genuineness of the transaction uh, which will be uh, taken into account. So, when the trust is formed, it was with the actual... Uh, uh, intention to benefit that particular uh, beneficiary there. So, there is no intention of uh, you know reducing your tax burden. So, Correct. it will be treated in the hands of the beneficiary, uh, the trust or the beneficiary there. Correct. Uh, but if beneficiary is not there and the trust deed says that after the lifetime of that beneficiary, the asset has to come back to uh, the, uh, the original transfer, from that day onwards any income that comes uh, from that uh, thing will be added yes. as the income of the transfer. Yes, correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Now, we all spoke about transferring the assets and the an income which is coming out of this particular asset. What if an asset is transferred and it creates a negative income? For example, a mutual fund portfolio is transferred to the beneficiary and markets crashed 
and because there is an urgency of cash so the assets are liquidated at a value which is lesser than the invested price correct so it results in an actual loss hmm. if clubbing of income provisions are to be taken into account in the name of the transferer whether such losses which also occur can be uh, taken as the losses in the hands of the transferer yes because the income uh, we in specific under income tax act will also include negative income that means losses okay so if any income has to be clubbed then if any losses incurred also would have been so it is will, treated in a similar yes. it is treated in a yes yes similar way yes okay mr shriram uh, there could be persons who say many a times hmm. uh, yes i will part my income hmm. but i will not part my asset correct uh, maybe if i am keeping a bank fd i will say that uh, the interest income be transferred to uh, somebody else correct right correct. but fd ownership is mine correct or if i have a building the rent belongs to the next person correct or similar way only the the i will i will give donate transfer my income but i will have control over the asset the uh, the income generating asset correct in such cases if i give this income to somebody else what happens to that uh, income will it be still clubbed in my name or does it belong to the other person no, the income will be clubbed in your name okay because what happens is the receiver is only the beneficiary ah. maybe say for example my children child is uh, studying somewhere okay and uh, i keep an fd i don't want to give the capital that fd to that particular child what i'll do is i'll instruct the banker that whatever the interest from that on a monthly basis you transfer it to that particular uh, Uh, account so it is only an arrangement it yes. is just that i am spending this money yes. it's so instead of spending on something else i'm yes. giving it to somebody yeah. so the income belongs to me no yes, question yes. of uh, uh, reduction in income tax income because of this activity nothing 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 but if the beneficiary uses this money runs a business hmm. or generates some other income hmm. on his own hmm. then it will not be clubbed here no that is an active participation of the yes. other individual yes 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 correct correct right so dear viewers So if you are thinking that you can bring down your income tax slab by splitting it in the name of your spouse or some other member of the family the law of the land income tax law does not allow it we have discussed the various case scenarios here if you are a person who is trying to do these things my sincere advice to you is have a word with your chartered accountant see whether it is permitted by the law and then take appropriate steps don't be under the impression that you can pay lesser taxes by splitting your income in one or the other names so that may not go in favor of you uh, mr shriram rao thank you very much for bringing all these points for the benefit of our viewers i have seen lot of questions in the comment section people asking can i split this income in the name of my wife and similar questions hope the video that we have done today has put to rest uh, the uh, doubts that could have been there in the minds of our uh, viewers thank you very much again uh, from the bottom of my hearts for bringing all this information for the benefit of our viewers you're welcome yeah dear viewers hope the video that uh, we have done today uh, gave you insights into whether you can split your income in the name of you and your spouse to bring down your taxation when you come back to india if this helped you to understand this subject please like this video if you are a person who is watching this channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for this channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones thank you very much for watching this episode on nri money clinic i shall be back with you with yet another topic in yet another video very very soon press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel